Welcome to Shooting Spaces, a real estate photography podcast. Discussions on gear, technique, industry news, and interviews with the best in the business. Now, here are your hosts, Rich Baum and Brian Berkowitz. Hello, and welcome to Shooting Spaces. This is Brian from New York. And Rich Baum from Sacramento, California. And thank you all for tuning in for another fantastic episode. And before we start, Rich, I heard your week, your weekend, I should say, was absolutely insane. Yeah, well, it was a little off topic from real estate photography, but um, I shot two days or as many people want me to say, not don't say shot. I photographed two days of the uh, Sacramento Spartan obstacle race. And uh, I I didn't reach my max I've ever shot or my record, but I did shoot a total of over just over 22,000 images. And uh, let's just say partway through each day, my mind kind of went explode. But it was really great. The weather was perfect. It was really, really enjoyable and um perfect because it was in sacramento and it's where i live and it's close to me but um and i just want to say everybody is going oh impossible how in the world could you do 22 well i just want everybody to know that we upload probably between 150 and 200,000 images between all the photographers and these are one megabyte images file size i even have to shoot my sony camera in crop mode to get small enough and then we uh everything gets uploaded directly with no editing or anything so it's a little tricky to shoot uh straight out of the camera a hundred percent at twenty two thousand images but we do it and we had a lot of fun so i was really uh i'm decompressing today that seems like a long day you're literally shooting everybody that passes by is that correct I'm trying to get two to three shots of everybody that passes by, but I literally get probably about 75, 80% of the runners. We had uh, 7,000 runners one day, and I think yesterday we might have had 8,000 runners. So a lot of wow. people, and it's fast. It's just nonstop for eight to 10 hours. So How's it's just crazy. Finger? My finger's okay. It? It's my left shoulder. It's it's. And I use a monopod 7200, right. but it's kind of, uh, it was hard to keep my hand up for that long. But I will say the Sony a7 III is absolutely the greatest thing for this type of photography because I shot in electronic shutter mode. So I did not use my shutter for one shot and I plug in an external USB battery bank and I can use the same battery all day long so those two factors are just uh priceless to me so i'm really stoked no, sure. i think it's important yeah. to uh you know on that note just to make sure everyone has their workflow down because that that's important you know make sure you know even i use an ipad mini with my camera and there are times where i have to use an external battery pack which i keep in my case mm-hmm. just to keep that yeah. ipad going so those yeah. are good things to have in the case yeah so what was what's going on with you uh i hear you're gonna have some rain this week what's going on yeah we got some rain out here this week it's gonna be a slow week for me i got a couple of things towards the end of the week hopefully uh the rain will subside but we got rain here today rain here tomorrow so you know it is what it is we just uh move along and uh, get through it Uh, you don't even want to know what it's like out here (laughs) my weekend wasn't as eventful as yours but i got to uh, sleep a little bit so, oh, great. Good, I don't good, sleep good. during so, the week, so at least uh, catch up a little on the weekends. Great. So what we got going on today, Brian? We have an Ask the Guys question, a pretty pretty neat one, um, from Liz Taylor. And I will Elizabeth play Elizabeth Taylor? Oh, yes. not, not that Elizabeth Taylor. Okay. I don't think so, but that would be pretty remarkable if it was. Well, it'd be remarkable because she went from acting to real estate photography, so things must be bad. <laughs> Okay, great. Well, you want to play it? Hey, guys. My name is Liz Taylor from Atlanta, Georgia. My business is ATL Real Estate Photography. I know you've discussed pricing, but my question is actually about invoicing. How long do you give your customers to pay an invoice, or do you require them to pay before delivering images? I'm finding that as my business grows, it seems to be taking people longer and longer and I'm just chasing down money. Thanks for your help. Love the podcast. Wow, Liz Taylor, thank you so much. That was really a good 
Good question. And, and I know that, that uh, I've got uh, some thoughts on that, but I want to think a little bit on that and I'm going to throw it into your court, Brian. Uh, what do you, what do you think about that? And what do you do? Sure. Thank you, Liz, for the question. And I love your business name. That is definitely great for SEO, ATL real estate photography. If you're in Atlanta, that's as good as it gets. Um, but back to your question, how long do I give my clients to pay? Well, as most of you know, I do a lot of commercial real estate as well. And commercial and residential are very two different things. So I'm going to start off with residential because I think um, it's a little bit more along the lines of what most of us, you know, me and you, uh, you Rich, and, and a lot of our listeners mm -hmm. are doing. And um, I usually require payment at day of shoot. Um, that's how it is for almost all my clients, unless they're a, a longstanding client, but I don't deliver the final images until I get paid. So, most, I mean, there are some exceptions, which I'll go into in a second, but yeah, most of my clients, um, if they're not going to pay me that day while I'm there on site shooting, either via credit card, you know, I use Square, I have one of those little stripe readers or a check or cash, um, then I tell them, you know, I'll send you a link to pay me later you know, later at the end of the shoot, but I will not deliver my photos until the invoice is paid, especially if they are new clients, um, new clients that I've never worked with before. I don't know. I don't trust. Um, you know, I have my, uh, my guards up and I just make sure I cover my bases. Now there are a couple of clients that I've been working with for years that, you know, usually take a day or two to pay me. They just have to make sure, you know, their funds are in order, whatever the case is. And for them, I usually deliver and it's never been a problem. I never have any issues um, as far as getting paid. You know, I might take a day or two or even three, but I always I always get paid. Um, but my goal is not, for a residential standpoint, not to have really any outstanding balances with any clients more than a couple of days or even, you know, a business week worth. Um, so that's where I'm at with... Um, residential and no no customers really give me any pushback on that you know they understand that once i deliver the photos um our transaction is done so i don't really get much pushback as far as you know can i pay you in a week or two or three or four whatever the case is um now commercial is a completely different entity um and most of my commercial real estate clients it's usually a net 30 or sometimes even a net 45 and the reason is it's typically not my, the agent directly who's paying me out of their pocket. It's usually you're going through payroll systems and this and that, and, you know, there's just policies in place and, you know, all this other fun stuff, W9s you have to hand in. And it's, a, it's usually a whole procedure. So, um, usually when I do invoice, you know, obviously when I get a new client, I try to get payment at time of shoot and I tell them that's usually my policy. But majority of the time, or more time, more often than not, they come back to me and say, hey, you know, we have a net 30 or a net 45, you know, send us an invoice as soon as you can. We start processing and put it through the system and we go from there. Um, and I've been, I, I, don't, I don't really have much trouble from my commercial clients getting paid either. I just know that I have to wait for it. But if I do enough commercial real estate work, it's not that big of a deal because I just have the cash flow coming. So even if I got to wait, you know, a month, a month and a half to get paid. I still have, you know, the jobs from the previous month coming in. So, and there are exceptions too to that. You know, I have, I was telling you earlier, Rich, I have a client who's been a client of mine for about six, seven years now, um, all commercial real estate. And they're always been great. Um, usually they pay me net 30 or 45. It's, there's no science to it, but usually within five to six weeks I get paid. And I actually have two outstanding invoices from the end of August with them. So, you know, we're going on almost three months now and it's kind of getting a little frustrating because I actually reached out to them about a month ago um, and they said they received the invoices. They're, you know, in their processing department, you know, they should come out to them and the payment should come to me in a couple of weeks. Um, and I haven't received it. And coincidentally, I emailed them this morning just as a follow-up. Now. You know, I have to tread lightly because like I said, these are good clients. They give me a lot of work every year and I've been with them for about six or seven years um, and they, they give me a nice chunk of change every year. So, you know, you, it, it's just, it's obviously a very uncomfortable situation when you have to confront them about that, especially given the relationship we have for so many years. But 
you know, there's only so much I can do to push him. You know, I'm not going to give up the client. They've been really good to me. They do. They give me a lot of work. You know, they, they own a couple of buildings all over the city. And anytime a new office or floor um, becomes available, I'm the first one in there. So it's kind of just one of those things, you know, it's this one client that I just got to sit and wait and, and bear it out. But yeah, that's that's typically what it is for, for me out here in New York, at least. Um, for commercial, it's typically 30 to 45 days. And every so often I'll get a net 60. Um, sometimes on a net 60, I'll charge a little bit more if I can, just because I know that I have to wait two months for that. So, um, but it's always the type of thing where you kind of have to just speak to the client and feel it out and kind of make really snap decisions as you're talking and try to, you know, see how much you can get out of them and how much you can't. So. That's now I got I'm a at. question. Would you ever sure. change your policy? Um, let's say you're having a client that is notoriously late and they're, they're consistently late. Would you um, go in there and uh, would you tell them in, in person or would you add it to your website that uh, payment is due before uh, delivery of images? What would you do for something existing, someone existing? Well. I would hopefully never get myself into a situation where a client is consistently late. Um, and I think I set myself up in a way where that should prevent me from happening consistently. Um, does it happen every so often? Yes. But like I said, I have the images, so I have all the leverage, you know, granted I came out and I shot and I gave up my time. Um, but <laughs> they hired me, they want the pictures. I need to get this to market. So, uh, I'm not saying you should go out and, and get into a fight with your clients if they don't pay you right away. But what I'm saying is they need you as much as you need them. So mm -hmm. yeah. I don't, you know, I don't have anywhere on my site that says payment is due of. Um, most of my clients know that already. If it's a new client, I just tell them, or they usually even ask me. That's usually one of the first, because the first question out of all my clients' mouths are, you know, how much do you charge? And, um, you know, after that, I usually just tell them, you know, payment is due the day of shoot, you know, the day of shoot, whether it's at the shoot or by the end of that day, payment is due the day of shoot. Um, because I don't want to start sending it to my editor unless I know I receive payment. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, unless it's a client that, you know, I know is good for it or that I've been working with for a while that I trust. So, yeah. you know, well, you got a good you point to there. If you're, if you're delivering them, if you're editing them off site, you have a really good point there. Yeah, yeah. Because once I send it to my editor, if my client pays me or not, I owe that editor money. Um, I'm going to owe that editor money. So I don't want to be a lo at a loss if something happens with my client where even, I mean, it's never happened, but if we have a falling out and they say, I'm not paying you, you can keep the images, then, then I'm at a, besides my time, I'm at a monetary loss. So, yeah. um, yeah, I mean, have policies in place. I don't know if you need to necessarily spell it out, but make sure all your new clients are aware of your policies and your terms. And, you know, I get home from a day of shooting. If they haven't paid me that day, I invoice them. Or even if they have paid me that day, I usually send um, most of my clients a paid invoice so they have a record or a receipt of it, which they usually ask for for tax purposes. Um, my invoice has everything on it, you know, all the terms that we've discussed before and all that, and usually good to go. So, um, Minus an occasion here or there, you know, my system is pretty, has been pretty good and pretty sa uh, fail safe at this point. Great info, Brian. I, uh, I really, I've learned a couple of things there myself. And um, certainly I don't have the right answers uh, for all the questions because I, I too deal with, with issues. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, something that I guess, as I tell people, uh, especially my, my, like my workshop attendees, I, I tell them that uh, each person's business is different. Each person's different. It depends where you live. It depends on your product, on your business, your the the volume of business you do. So it's really hard to take a single answer or even two answers and try and make them work for you. So this is really something each one out there listening needs to uh, d figure out and develop a way of, of making whatever works for you work. So for me, um, I'm very lax on this and I'm not a hot, what I would call a high volume uh, photographer. I uh, do what I do and it seems to work for me, but I do not have not uh, notoriously uh, demanded payment uh, uh, the day of shooting. Um, and I have also, I do not um, 
demand payment before or require payment for release of the images. And my clients have all been fairly consistent. And that could be consistent with giving some of them, give me a check of the day of some of them. I do most of my clients actually now, I think I bill via a credit card. So that's really up to me when I want to get paid, get them the invoice and such. But I certainly have um, a couple of clients that are regularly, um, you know, maybe a week, two weeks out, a couple of them. I know that if I were to, um, If I were to get a call from them, I could say as I get the call, okay, I bet it will be this date before I get paid, but that's okay because I've just accepted it. And I guess the only reason for me um, changing right now would be almost on principle because these lateness of payment or some people waiting a month to pay or I think the longest is ever is maybe six weeks. I mean, that's really, really stretching it. And I will get uh, I will make a phone call after six weeks. But I just I uh, find it's it's not really putting me out too much. So it's more of a just making me feel bad that they maybe they don't value my time and my because I'm extremely fast turnaround. And I think that is what I'd like them to know. I go the extra day distance to make a really quick 12 hour or at worst about a, a 18 hour turnaround time. And I would really appreciate the same in your court as far as uh, expediting payment. And uh, a couple of my agents that do pay me the day of, I've got a couple that they throw in a little extra money every time. And it's just the way they are. So I think that's fantastic. But um, I, I really would like to maybe change with the new year. Uh, you know, maybe we should do a podcast on New Year's resolutions uh, for 2019. But I certainly will be changing a couple of things to new clientele. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm at. And uh, again, whatever works for you and you're comfortable with is really what you should you should go with there's no you know cut and dry but i think you're you're responsible for setting up uh expectations uh when in all areas setting up expectations i think that's your responsibility sure you know what just popped in as we're talking on my email that client that i was just talking about i received your check today in the office it will be mailed out to you today so look at that (laughs) after three months that's how good our podcast is. Exactly. <laughs> As we're recording it, you know. <laughs> we haven't even New, released it yet. <laughs> in New York City, they, uh, they uh, I guess, well, no, as I mentioned, I emailed them this morning. So it wasn't, it wasn't just, um, it wasn't just random, but I emailed them this morning, but um, yeah. it's going to be mailed out today. So it'll be a welcome check. Yeah. So, and, um, and I want to just end with one thing. Um, literally. Uh, And again, I'm not high volume. I'm not shooting five houses a day all week, but I have never, maybe once I have not received payment and someone give me a hard time. I have, I don't think I've really, aside from maybe one weird time, I have never received issues. And uh, that's kind of maybe why I just let it go as it is. I write down, you owe me. and, And if I don't get something in a month, I'll probably send you a little a little teaser, but I do on all my invoices, I, I put in uh, payment is due upon receipt of this invoice. So I think that's something that we can all do. And uh, so. Sure. I have that on my invoices too. And I think that's what helps people um, be more readily available to pay me day of. And, you know, look on the note that you said, sometimes you have consistent clients that, you know, are always one or two weeks out. You know, if that happened to me, I would kind of look at it as, look, this client, their payment terms are a week or two weeks out. So if I want to take jobs mm-hmm. from this client, you know, I yeah. go into it with the understanding that's that's what it is. And if I'm okay with that, then you can take the job. You know, if I had a new client call me and say, and I tell them, look, payments due day of, and they told me, look, you know, I, I have payroll systems, whatever the case is, I need to, you know, I, I send out checks once a week or every other week. Is that okay with you? You know, if it's a decent client, I'm not going to turn it down. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you just you just know that calls coming in from this client, or you know, are going to be a week or two out, and you just learn to adjust accordingly. But obviously, I try to push as much as I can for day of, um, Mm -hmm. of or within the next day or so, minus some you know rare exceptions. So 
Well, that's great. Okay. Well, I hope that answered your question, Liz, and everybody else out there. Uh, make your own make your own decisions, and uh, you know, if whatever you, works for you. So, uh, what uh, what are we gonna do now, Brian? We're gonna uh, just tell people to please keep sending us uh, ask the guys questions, right? We, yes, we need more we're ask the guys low. questions. Yeah, we're running a little low, so we need some questions. So. Don't be shy. Come on in, get a link back to your mm -hmm. website and um, learn a little bit. Yeah. And I want to say, please, everybody subscribe to uh, Shooting Spaces, a real estate photography podcast. And, uh, you know, you can give us thumbs up on our uh, website and uh, just uh, ask your questions. So, uh, you know, I'm going to I'm going to throw it in your court there, Brian. Take us out. Exactly. Don't forget, subscribe to our newsletter. You can still leave us some reviews because that's how we uh, gain in popularity. And uh, we got some good things coming out. So just make sure mm -hmm. you're uh, always tuned in for our episodes and our you know, Facebook posts, Instagram posts, and our weekly newsletter, mm -hmm. which right now is just our podcast releases, but mm -hmm. um, we'll be more hopefully soon in the future. So with yeah. that, Rich... Okay, just be sure, go uh, enjoy your day and get out there and shoot some spaces. This has been Shooting Spaces, a real estate photography podcast. Subscribe to this show and don't forget to leave us a review. You can also follow Rich and Brian on social media and at their website, shootingspacespodcast.com.